Pre-fertilization, structures and events. Several hormonal and structural changes are initiated which lead to the differentiation and further development of the floral primordium. Inflorescences are formed which bear the floral buds and then the flowers. In the flower, the male and female reproductive structures, the andrisium and the gynesium, differentiate and develop. As you had studied in the previous classes, that the andrisium consists of a whorl of stamens representing the male reproductive organ and the gynesium represents the female reproductive organ. Stamen, microsporangium and pollen grain. A typical stamen has two parts. The long and slender stalk called the filament and terminal bilobed structure called the anther. The proximal end of the filament is attached to the thalamus or the petal of the flower. Careful observation of anthers from different flowers under dissecting microscope show an interesting range in shape, size and attachments. A typical anther is a tetraspongiate. It has a column of sterile tissue called the connective, on either side of which is anther lobe. Each lobe has two microsporangia separated by a sterile tissue. Externally, the partition can be often be made by deep longitudinal grooves. At maturity, the two sporangia in a lobe become joined due to the breakdown of partition between them. The mature anther wall comprises an epidermis followed by a layer of endothesium, two or three middle layers and a single layered tapetum. This is innermost layers of anther wall and attains its maximum development at the tetrad stage of microsporogenesis. It completely surrounds the sporangeneous tissue and is of considerable physiological importance because all the food material to the sporangeneous tissue must pass through it. Endomitosis is a type of mitosis in which the chromosome duplication and chromatid separation takes place within the intact nuclear membrane and without the formation of a spindle. The result is large polyploid nucleus. In the uninucleate tapetum of cucubitia nuclei of four sizes corresponding to their degree of ploidy, 2n, 4n, 8n and 16n are formed as a result of mitosis. When the anther is young, a group of compactly arranged homogeneous cells called the sporangeneous tissue occupies the center of each microsporangium. Each cell of the sporangeneous tissue is capable of giving rise to microspore tetrad. The process of formation of microspores from a pollen mother cells through meiosis is called microsporogenesis. Inside each Microsporangium, several thousands of microspores of pollen grains are formed that are released with the dehiscence of anther. Pollen grains are generally spherical, measuring about 25 to 50 micrometers in diameter. It has a prominent two layered wall. The hard outer layer called exine, made up of sporopollenin most resistant organic material known, pollen grain exine has prominent apertures called germ pores where sporopollenin is absent. The inner wall of the pollen grain is called the intine. It is a thin and continuous layer made up of cellulose and pectin. The cytoplasm of pollen grain is surrounded by a plasma membrane. When the pollen grain is mature, it contains two cells, the vegetative cell and generative cell. 
The vegetative cell is bigger, has abundant food reserves, and a large irregularly shaped nucleus. The generative cell is small and floats in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell. It is spindle shaped with dense cytoplasm and a nucleus. Pollen grains of many species cause allergies and bronchial disorders, asthma, bronchitis, etc.